And the flow tales for us are untold stories of water. Uh, we have here uh, Lucia Tala, senior lecturer <laughs> in uh, anthropology, University of Wales, I'm just reading Trinity in St. David, and author of How Water Makes Us Human, Engagements with the Materiality of Water. Um, Thanks, over to you, Lucy. Thanks, Vinny. I've, in many ways, what my work is doing is chimes with what Patrick was talking about. So what, what I've been trying to do is um, remind people of their existential ties to substances of the world. So since one could say enlightenment times, we've we, we've been sort of disenchanted. The, the world is is. Uh, rational and, and needs to um, e every decision that we make needs to be based on reason and rationality and with that some of the wonder of the world has gone. My work is trying to remind people of the agency of the other aspects of the world that are con constantly presented as inert and um, resources for, for human use. So I, I, I want to challenge human exceptionalism. I want to illustrate the agency in the world and I want to suture that divide, join us back up again with the rest of the world. And the reason why I look at water is because um, of the work that I did in Kenya where there isn't very much water. And I had lots of discussions with people about you know, I, I was looking for, I was looking at water security. So I'm going to say it, it was quite a dry subject, but, um, um, but uh, what I learned from th this tribal group called the Giriyama was how they understood themselves in reference to water. So a lot of their cultural practices are linked to the way water behaves. So not what they think water is, but rather following water's behaviors. So looking at the fact that it evaporates, that it stagnates, that it uh, hides underwater, that it, that underground, sorry, and um, how it flows away, how it's uncontainable um, and dangerous if you do contain it. So um, that got me thinking about a lot of other things. So I'm actually not focusing on Giriyama um, ideas at all. That is in the book, um, but rather what I want to do is um, think about water's behaviours and how those behaviours have shaped um, the world, actually, the kind of everything. So if you've read my piece that's in the flow tales bit, it, it, it talks about how um, we need to forget the illusion that the channel of the river as it runs through the earth is where the river is and goes on to give some other examples of how water seeps out from that channel. Fingers of water seep out and, and through the earth, you know, feeding the rest of the plants around and sometimes creating marshes. And if I had my PowerPoint, you would now be seeing a slide that illustrated that. <laughs> Pressure on, Vinny! Is it? Okay. You know, the point I was kind of making is that rivers or water influences in, in wider ways. And, and, and because that was specifically about rivers, I stuck to rivers. So I want to expand on that, really, and take that further. Um, to, to show how water doesn't only shape the landscape, because in some ways that's quite obvious, um, but actually how it goes on, to, how it shapes um, other aspects of life, um, other uh, areas of existence, entities, bodies, and so on. So that's uh, what I want to do. I just forgot to mention that um, on our ebook, uh, you, as you mentioned, um, you made an, an incredible article, which gave the name also to this section, Cultural Lives of Water, uh, which we took it from your piece. So um, it's it's online on our website. So, yeah. Right. And yeah. You mentioned about it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and the, the Cultural Lives of Water as a title is really about how it 
water plays a, a role in our lives. It, it, it shapes us. So what I want to look at is the physical capacities of water to move and how water moves specifically. Um, and, and so I put that quote up there from a Bartholomew in, in their book, um, Hidden Natures, which says the nature of water is to move. I mean, I find this very compelling that water is constantly moving. I feel as if there's something that needs to be understood about this because it it is it 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 insists on moving. It never stays still, and it can actually transform its shape to encourage that. So it can it can float off, it can evaporate, it can be steam, and then it regroups later. So it's it's got these incredible physical capacities that are all centered around this notion of movement, and that um, interests me extremely so in space the molecular structure of water is such that when it's in space when it isn't um drawn upon by the forces of the planet um it forms uh, a a little sphere that that hangs it it it, it wants to be a sphere it, it it tries to be that its molecular structure kind of insists that it does that but as soon as it's hit by gravity and the movement of the planet it is drawn out from its circular shape so I'm sure you can imagine that and I tried to show that with the picture there of raindrops hitting a, a piece of glass a window it, it, it it's drawn along and in association with this um, it produces an internal spiral inside it so as it's drawn out by gravity and the movement of the planet it starts to spiral and form these serpentine shapes on the landscape. And we all know the, the movement of water as it goes down the plug hole. Well, that's happening inside it as it moves through rivers and across uh, the landscape. All right, so this serpentine and circular motion is apparent in nature. So any liquid that you take, and this, these are some experiments done with water by some German scientists to record how water flows, you see these beautiful patterns. This is water uh, with um, like paint dust thrown over it and then a line drawn through it. You sometimes see artists who work with clay who, who create these sorts of patterns too with, with the dyes. The, the, these patterns are produced, these, these spirals, these vortices, these, um, the, this sense of movement, this elongation of circles. And um, this, is, uh, this is important then because it's not acting passively on, on the earth, on the bodies of the people around, but it's rather producing these patterns and, and sort of almost sending these messages all the time. So before life walked on the earth, of course, we were all in the water. All of our greatest ancestors far back were, you can change the slide now, fantastic, um, these uh, unicellular cellular organisms and they had water all around them. So their bodies didn't need to be hard, but you can still see that the form of the body is such that it allows the water to flow through it. And you can even see the channels through the bodies of some of these um, entities uh, using the water, um, playing with the water so that the water flows through it in a certain way. And their shapes are often in association with how to best move through the water or engage with the water. As bodies moved out of the water, they started to need um, harder structures, uh, boundaries to their bodies uh, in a slightly different way because water wasn't around them all the time. And so as they walk out of the water, then you start to see uh, these different forms. So we've got shells here and you uh, and uh, we'll see a bit later. Don't don't move yet, Vinny, um, some other forms. But you can see here some of the uh, the 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 protection of hardening forms, but still articulating the form of the spiral and the circle elongated. So the sphere elongated, pulled out. And you can still see that. And what's important about these hardened shells is that they show the movement of water solidified into form. So water has taken shape and hardened 
And there it is in these bony structures, in these shelly structures. Okay, you can move on, yeah. And you can see this in horns and even in our bones, our long bones illust uh, are formed out of these elongated, uh, pulled out spirals in the same way. So you can see a move from the softness with the water to coming out of the water, but the influence of water and how water moves is still apparent in the body. And of course the water, water is still in the body. It, it, it might not be external to the body um, in quite the same way as, as aqua life, but it is for, for the rest of us, you and I included, um, it, it's still apparent because we have this life fluid running through us all the time. And so here's Leonardo's pictures of the heart um, as illustrative of the kind of rivers of water that we have running through us all the time. Um, so first of all, we've got waters, just go back a second. We've got waters movement um, solidified in horns and in shells um, and in uh, bones and in these different forms that we can see throughout life, um, we've, we can see how water has influenced, the sh literally influenced the shape of our bodies. And now we have the, the issue of water running through our bodies. So we have this other thing to think about. And the heart is very interesting because for a very long time, um, people haven't understood how the heart works at all. Um, I think in popular ideas, we all imagine it's a pump with one side pumping and forcing the liquid to come out on the other side because of this sort of squeeze of a pump. It wasn't until fairly recently in the 20th century, indeed, um, that uh, a Spanish um, uh, cardiologist, go back, um, thank you, um, found out through literally pulling the heart apart in his bare hands, that the heart was nothing more than a tube, it's elongated spiral, that the muscles, and you can see that in the picture here, you can see it unraveling and being rolled back up again, that the central point of life in your heart, in your body, that allows you to keep the fluid moving around is nothing more than a tube that articulates the same spiral that runs through the rivers and, and through the currents of the sea and through the raindrops and through water going down plug holes. And the reason why the heart works and can pump in the way that it does is because it, it, is, it is an image of how water flows without restriction. So it, you, the shape that it creates is one which allows the uh, water, the blood in us, that watery substance, that liquid uh, to uh, move without um, too much obstruction. So it fills up and it empties in accordance with these spirals that water demands of us. So our, you can see then that our bodies have been created with in partnership with water, in partnership with the way liquid wants and is able to move. So I put a, a quote up there um, for you to uh, read from a, a doctor a bit later after looking at this, um, this Spanish individual whose name is Guasp Torrent or Torrent, I don't know, probably mispronouncing that in some way. Um, when he, he looked at it himself and he said, when I looked at the heart for the first time, I saw a circum oh, rental basal loop. And then I saw a descending limb and then an ascending limb, and they curl around each other. Now, for years, people had wondered why this happened. I realized this was a spiral, and I began to think about spirals, and I began to understand that spirals are almost the master plan of nature in terms of structure and in terms of rhythm. If you pick up the middle of a spiral, you form a helix. And of course, the heart is a helix. And there's a reference there to um, the, uh, a web page which shows you these pictures and has a link to a YouTube video explaining that if you're interested. So the final point I want to make, and there isn't another slide, is that um, nature 
doesn't make machines. So this is, I think, a very profound point. Machines take bits and put them together. And bodies are often thought of as bits all put together, as our societies, as our cities, as our toasters. We, we think in terms of bits being put together. But that's not actually what nature does at all. It creates everything kind of together. You know, people say that the left ventricle uh, pumps by squeezing, but but it 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 doesn't do that. It, it's it's a reference to the river systems that run through the planet. It's it's um, it's a it's a shape. It's an architecture. It's a structure that uses the way water can move to allow it to exist. So it's a relationship between the substances and form. Um, so that's that's basically my my uh, my presentation. Oh, I did have another slide. How wrong was I about my own presentation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you can read that. That's an extension of the initial um, uh, quote that I put up. So this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in reminding people that they are water. Now, not in the way of like, oh, 80% of the body is water, but rather that the actual architecture, the fact that you can think is because of water. It's because it's flowing through you physically. One's physiology has been created in association with the way water can work. Other chemicals, you know, are involved too, but, uh, my focus here is on water. Okay, I, I'm, I've definitely gone over uh, 10, haven't I? Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very much for that. Um, we got some, some time more to talk about it. And it's, again, very interesting view. Uh, 